Hi folks, G3 here, and welcome to another installment of my journey to go green. Well folks, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy it, then please remember to click the like button. And also, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you get notified when I load up a new video. Right, let's get on with the video. Today's episode is a very quick one, and I just want to extol the virtues of when you let your garden grow naturally. I think what has been ingrained in us from an early age is that it's great to have tidy gardens and that you cut your grass and it looks nice and pristine and, and it's beautiful and, and that's the way to go. But obviously more modern thinking is that it's great to have a bit of a mixture and allow some areas of your garden to grow a little bit more naturally, giving the opportunity for various different insects to have the opportunity to pay a visit to your flowers and get the nectar they need and just have that variety of flowers in the garden that will serve the different type of insects that can visit. Because different insects have different mouthpieces that are able to access the nectar in different flowers. So having a wide range of things is great. So if you've got things like um, umbellifer flowers, so they're the ones that are um, lots of tiny little flowers on there. They're great for um, things like, uh, I think it was hoverflies and the like I've seen on and, and various things. Whereas digitalis, so the foxgloves, they're great for bees. I love hearing bumblebees in them and resonating and, um, uh, and enjoying their time in there. So what I would like to encourage you to do is to try and leave areas of your lawn and your garden to go a little bit wild and you might get some surprises because here, right in front of me, it, you can't see it at the moment, but I assure you the leaves are coming here and there is a pyramidal orchid that comes out here and it's been out for the last couple of years. And it's a lovely purple flower that is in the shape of a pyramid. And that will come out here and I recognize the leaves where it's coming there. And if I'd been cutting this lawn, that never would have happened and I would have missed it. And there's a couple of other flowers that I'm gonna um, show you as well that have come out because I have left areas to go wild or I have created a little wildflower meadow. So let's have a look at that wildflower meadow now. So what I have here is an area of the garden that I've gone and put a fence around. I removed all of the turf, kept the soil quite bare and then I got a seed mix that is especially right for chalky soil. You can get wildflower seed mixes for the certain type of soil that you have in your area. So I got one that was suitable for chalky soil because in Dover, this is chalky. And I've scattered the seeds in here. Now this has been here for, this is its third year. It will take a little bit of time for different sort of flowers to get established, but now that it's been in here and it's had time to grow, I get a wide range of wildflowers coming here that have different flower heads for the different type of insects that will want to come into this garden and um, you get such a diverse range of insects coming because you've got this natural range of flowers for them and you get special things turning up in here as well and this morning I saw that I have another different orchid in here so let's have a look at that now. So I'm not sure how well you can see it but down in here, we have a common spotted orchid tucked in the middle of my wildflowers. And it's beautiful. It is so delicate and so cute. It's just standing out, all that purple in amongst the green where the other things haven't come into flower yet. So that is a common spotted orchid. It's brilliant. If you're able to let things go a bit natural, and have the wildflowers that I've got here, you get these little treasures turn up as well. And as well as this, I also have another orchid that's growing in the front garden. So let's take a look at that. What we have here is a bee orchid. And this beautiful little thing is just growing amongst my front lawn because I've left it to grow wild a bit. So rather than cutting it right back, I'm just letting this grow naturally. And there's a bee orchid. 
So that's what happens if you can just let things grow naturally. And I mean, you can keep some of the grasses trimmed down if you find it's getting a little bit unruly. I've got a range of different flowers coming out in the front lawn because I've just left it to grow naturally. And this little fella is a bee orchid. That's what I'm encouraging you to do. That if you just wanna leave a little area to grow wild, you may well get some little treasures come up. And if you can afford it, then have a little area set aside as a wildflower garden. So take your grass up and plant some seeds that are wildflower seeds appropriate for your soil type. And you might get some little treasures come along as well. If you've got an area of your garden that's growing wild, then let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what you've managed to find. Have you got things like bee orchids or pyramidal orchids or even common spotted orchids? Or maybe you've got something different that is a little bit uncommon but it's growing in your garden because you've let it go wild. So that's it folks. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then please click the like button down below. And if you haven't done so already, then why not subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to follow me on my journey to go green. Well, thanks for watching folks. And until next time, bye.